In this video, I'm going over Synaptic Package Manager, possibly the most powerful graphic user interface for installing packages on Linux. If you're using APT as your package manager, obviously Synaptic would be the best alternative to using Terminal. So if you're not a big Terminal user, this is an absolute must install. Now during the actual intro here, I'm gonna put up a little status legend so you can actually know what the little icons mean when the, it's just a blank checkbox and then also if it's a green checkbox or if there's a star, the legend will tell you everything you need to know about those icons. I'm not gonna go over it in my voiceover, I just wanted to kinda of let you know that's there. Okay, let's start by launching Synaptic Package Manager and you will need to log in as root here. With that, it'll go ahead and launch, and we're presented with all these different uh, sections to navigate. The top four of the main ones I use, the very first sections, is basically a good way to search specific things. So if you're looking for an editor, you can click on editors and kind of look through all these and see what's available, and then just simply click and mark for installation to install them. So this is a good way of actually browsing around these specific things using the sections. Now the status tab is kind of cool because you can see what's installed or what has been added locally or is obsolete. So I actually added these packages that are not from a repository. You can see that uh, Linux headers, it's a custom kernel that I actually put in. You can also see NextCloud and OpenOffice because I like OpenOffice better than LibreOffice. And I manually installed these without using an actual repository. So that will be listed in this one. The other thing to note here is installed upgradable. Now, sometimes when you need to do an APT update and then an upgrade, well, this kind of shows you what's gonna be upgraded in that upgrade process. Now, if there was other packages, you can hit reload and this refreshes. That's almost the same as hitting an APT update. So once you've updated it, it'll actually call this in and says, hey, these need to be listed. Now to actually upgrade these let's go ahead and say mark all for upgrade and mark and then apply it'll say this is what's going to be upgraded and then we hit apply again and it will update these packages okay so we can actually look here everything looks good uh, i went ahead and hit un untick this normally this window would close out automatically I just like kind of looking at the upgrade process just to make sure I don't get anything too crazy. Uh, these warnings are perfectly fine uh, with my AMD Vega. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Uh, normally do leave that uh, unchecked. So now that that's done, this section is pretty much done. I never use the not installed or any of those listings. So let's go ahead and move on to the origin tab. The origin tab is actually pretty powerful because it shows you what repositories you're currently using and what packages within that repository you're currently using. So let's go to like the google.com. You can see that I'm using this repository to install the Google Cloud Platform or that utility set. And if we flip through these, you can see Team Viewer right here. I have this repository, but right now I'm actually don't have Team Viewer installed at all. Uh, now I can actually install this, which I probably should because I do quite a bit of remoting in for work. So let's go ahead and install that and hit apply. And we'll go ahead and do this one more time to be applied, Team Viewer. And there we go. It had just installed Team Viewer for me. So now I could launch this from the desktop. So to show you that, we can just go Team Viewer. And there it is, Team Viewer 14. And I'll close out of that. So that's just a sample of kind of seeing the origin. And it's actually really nice because sometimes you install that repository and you only want to install that one package from it. And you have a hard time doing that from command line or you might forget the package name. This is just a super powerful part of this utility. Now, the other thing I wanna show you is custom filters. I don't use too many things in here. However, I do like to go to broken and see if I have any broken packages and I can fix any dep dependencies and other things in there. And then also the upgradable. This is very much like on the status screen, hitting the installs upgradable. It would also show in this custom filter screen as well. Now, before I go ahead and end this, I also want to show one more really neat feature that comes with Synaptic. 
let's say I wanted to see what dependencies a specific package has. I can actually right click it, hit properties and say dependencies and it shows me everything this package depends on. This is really good for conflict resolution and you can kind of see what all it breaks when doing certain things. So very, very neat and, and powerful tool to actually go through and do the actual property screen of those specific packages because trying to find this information in command line can be a little bit more of a headache than just having it right at your fingertips in Synaptic Package Manager. So with all that, that is Synaptic Package Manager. And just a quick thing to get your feet wet, it is a fantastic utility and I use it quite often, especially when researching specific packages because it's a good way to have a front end because most front ends for Linux kind of stink when you go into a lot of the software centers and like Discover for KDE, Gnome, uh, Software Center for Gnome. And then also you have like Ubuntu Software Store. All those suck. I don't use them. They're horrible. I highly recommend though, if you have APT as your package installer, definitely get the Synaptic Package Manager. If you're not a big fan of Terminal, this is an absolute must install. So I went over that a little fast, but I think this is a great basis, if, especially if you're not big on Terminal, Synaptic Package Manager is an absolute must install. But let me know what you thought in the comments section below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, consider visiting me on Patreon. And I'll see you in the next video.